McGraw-Hill, purveyor of fine nationalist propaganda. A co-production of Van Gogh's Ear and Peter Fox Eye. How to Use Classroom Films, a guide to teaching while hungover. Correlated with, but not necessarily causated by. Oh man, a James Brown Richard Lewis collaboration? The theme song must be I Feel Neurotic. The room lights are dimmed, the projector is running. The students are sleeping. A setting for use of a very effective teaching tool. Hypnosis. Classroom film. Wait, I got a workplace film by mistake. Hope you like Achievement USA. And how well they learn it rests largely with how the film is used. It should be fed to them intravenously. We've constructed an electric motor from a few simple materials. Let's review what happens by looking at a diagram. The world's Here's first the let's play of magnet. Pong. Like all magnets, it has a North Pole and a South Pole. So we're just going to watch an educational film Here's inside this informational film? Educationception? An electromagnet. Played by Jamie Foxx, Andy, and McKellen at the same the time. wire is attached to wires leading to a dry cell. Dry cell is just a myth. When current starts to flow, the coil becomes an electromagnet with north and south poles. I don't believe in north and south poles. I'm a flat magnet. These or poles of the electromagnet are attracted by the poles of the permanent magnet and the block of iron turns. The block of iron turns, turns, turns. The current in the coil, by changing the dry cell connections, the north and south poles in our electromagnet reverse. This puts two north poles together. I'm seeing double, four together. Santas. Since like poles repel each other, the electromagnet rotates until opposite poles are attracted to one another. Yeah, when does Dr. Hubbard throw the ping pong balls? If we add the automatic switch to our diagram, it will look like this. Hold on, I'm barely handling now, this and you're the adding wires things? Are connected to the dry cell, the motor will continue to rotate in one direction. And we rotate all night to the best song ever. Man, was Bill Nye always this boring? Class concerned with how an electric motor works. They're really concerned. It's keeping them up at night. A complex process in simple, understandable terms. Yeah, those kids definitely look like they understand what's going on. Has proved itself an effective and valuable teaching aid. This is particularly true when the film has been carefully selected for content. Got to make sure they don't have cuss words. Directly prepared for viewing the film. Activities which follow the film are also important. And after film kegger. This is a post-film discussion. No. Christian Brune. Can someone explain to me the function of one of the basic parts of the electric motor? Danny. Yeah, I'm in the wrong class. I thought this was English lit. that automatic switch, the part called the commutator, the motor would make a complete revolution. Do you all agree with Danny's statement? You're going to side with that idiot? Yes, I do. I'm Spartacus. You could see that the commutator reverses the current. If it didn't, the motor action would stop. All right, now, from what we've seen in the film and talked about, can someone give me the definition of a commutator? A communist commentator? A commutator is a device for reversing the direction of a current. I'm not going to dignify that with a response, Sharon. Information and to stimulate deductive thinking. But it won't stimulate interest. The content is as much a part of using a film as the actual showing of it. For a film, Tell me, do I look more like Peter Lorre or John Astin? It's only a teaching tool and depends for its greatest effectiveness on how it is used by the teacher. Meanwhile, on the set of a Flip Wilson sketch... Days, ...perhaps even weeks prior to the showing, when the teacher selects the film, the director of her local instructional material center can often provide helpful advice about which of several films in the same subject area will best suit the teacher's purpose. Hmm, I don't think The Great Dictator is appropriate for children. Let's show them Birth of a Nation. Of course, one may have to rely on the resume in a catalog to determine a film's content. Let's well see, film. Your resume says you worked for six years at the Arclight? Looks like even films need redundant cover letters with their resumes. a hit or miss affair, but keyed to a lesson plan and made on the basis of the best information available about a film. The next step you as the teacher take in using a film is to become familiar with it yourself. Intimately. If the film is available to you for only a short time, you may have to limit your own preparation to studying the teacher's guide for the film if it is available. But that's still paying closer attention to a film than CinemaSins does. Here you will find usually a more complete description of the film's content than is possible in a catalog or file, along with a question you may want to ask following the showing of the film. 
God, I hate her. Comments from previous users of a particular film, if they are available, are also helpful. Be sure to browse the film's reviews on Letterboxd. An ideal way to study a film and prepare to use it with your class is to preview it, with pencil in hand, taking notes as the film progresses. It can be a real help to have one or more... Hey, Kristen Wiig as Gilly. ...room with you. As they watch from a viewpoint which is different from yours... Ignore them. You're the grown-up. ...unusual words or situations which may require explanation before the film is shown to the group. They may also reveal interests a teacher may use to motivate the entire class. All right, thanks for coming to the test screening. Please fill out your comment cards. You didn't understand? Well... I don't understand why the farmers and cattlemen had to fight so much. The farmer and the cowman should be friends. And plant their crops in the areas where the cattlemen were located. Mm -hmm. How about you, Mary? Any words you didn't understand? Well, blooded something. Blood on the saddle. I think it was. Creative teachers have many ways of developing class readiness for seeing a film. Preparation often starts the day before. Unusual words may be defined beforehand. These are all perfectly cromulent words. You recall that yesterday we talked about the problems of settling this large area of our country known as the Great Plains. Today we're going to see a film... A very racist film. Problems ...very clearly. Of course, when the Great Plains were being settled in the 1850s and 1860s, the movie camera had not yet been invented. So this film was crafted so by a woodpecker film, who turned to the audience story, and said, It's a living! ...and drawings made by artists who were there at the time. Now, Kathy, do you recall the problem about the Plains area that we discussed yesterday? Well, there The biggest problem was the lessons erasure of the genocide involved in the so-called settling. There really should be some sort of critical theory to put this stuff in a more complete context. We decided that this situation kept many people away who might otherwise have come and helped to settle the Great Plains. Yes. Very good summary, Kathy. I think. I wasn't listening. We're going to learn about some other problems that face these people. Mostly hygiene-related. It was an ugly time. Afterwards, I want you to be able to identify and discuss the problems and to describe how the eventual solution of these problems affected our country's history. All right, let's have the film. I hope this film never stops showing us other films. It wasn't like the days when cowboys fought Indians. Between cattlemen and farmers, nobody had the what for to make the difference. What? Both had six shooters and both could use them. Yes, because both had guns, nobody had the what for to make that genocide difference this time. Some tried a thorny hedge. Not to be confused with the horny The Edge. Always chasing those U2 groupies. tight, horse high, and bull strong. God, Bravo Farms isn't this folksy. Others tried just plain old wire. Plain wire or cinnamon raisin wire, or maybe an everything wire. And the search continued. The search for a fence that would combine the low cost of wire with the thorns of a hedge. The haunting acoustic barbed wire theme. And here's a rack of ninja throwing stars. Okay, here's Elwood. Now, where's Jake's contribution? In 1874... The Philadelphia Zoo opened. We could be looking at much more interesting animals than cows. ...granted a patent for a barbed fence wire that worked. The following year, Jacob Hayes received... So these illustrations are teaching us how to braid friendship bracelets? Both methods were practical and inexpensive. The West got its fencing. Yeah, just get to the part where Ben Franklin shakes Mark Twain's hand. To the railroads. And there were some who resisted the changes on the plains brought about by barbed wire. Mysterious mechanical monster loots bank. House of Jewels exhibit opens today. Fence cutters. But the bark of six shooters diminished. Laws were passed to protect both sides. Both white sides. Barbed wire turned out to be a blessing to the cattlemen, too. They had built their industry on the native Texas Longhorn, a tough, mean, ornery critter, as tough on the table as he was on the range. Yes, but were there purple cows? The cattlemen could separate their herds, introduce blooded stock, and supply the demand for better beef. Just waiting for the invention of impossible meat. The railroad, the cold revolt. Trains and guns, the only things that worked at opening day Disneyland. New ways of farming dry land. Dry land is just a... Oh, wait, I already referenced that. ...enabled our country to settle a vast interior, to turn what was once the great American desert into rich, fertile farmland. 
Ugh, sorry you had to see that, kids. I don't know what I was Let thinking. Me give me some reasons why the invention of barbed wire was so important to the development of the Great Plains. Well, it stole the MST3K movie's advertising budget. Well, the barbed Are all these kids Reagan impersonators? Stop starting sentences with well. Supposed to be, and the farmers could do more farming and less fighting. Yes. And this was the only kind of wire fencing ever invented that could do the job, wasn't it? You tell us, Why teacher. Did you wooden fences. Karen? There wasn't. Of course, one of those boomer students was named Karen. Karen? Now I think it might be interesting to find out why there was no wood available in the Great Plains area. This will take some research. So, Karen, you, Betty, Tom, and Alan prepare a report on this. The high of watching a movie in class and the low of preparing a group project back to back. Who would like to find out more about the benefits the barbed wire fencing made possible for the cattlemen? Bob? Help me, I'm in well, a different dimension! Don't mention something about separating the herds and introducing blooded stock. I'd like to know more about this. Okay, Bob. You team up with George, Bessie, Elaine, and Frank on that question. Three Seinfeld characters and one of the cows from the film. ...activities profitably. The objective should always be to use the film as a springboard to learning, understanding, and creating. Assigning a research project on a topic related to the film will help the student to form relations of ideas, concepts, and facts, and thereby provide creative learning experiences. It's no use. I'll never learn to draw Snoopy. In any review of effective use of... Take your seats. Film, Jimmy's going to tap dance to Elvis. Overlook ...the importance of physical details. For example, proper arrangements for seating, lighting, ventilation, and placement of equipment. There you go, kids. Directly downwind of the asbestos pile. Also, if you plan to run the film yourself, check ahead of time to make sure you are familiar with the projector and its operation, how to thread it, and how to operate the controls. Okay, somehow I accidentally forwarded the film to my entire contacts list? When these details are handled by a student projectionist, it is still important for you to make sure that these arrangements are made beforehand. All these physical details may contribute or detract from the showing. And hence... And hence, they find, they find, their task is not a grind. Tool. Remember also that since using a film is part of a creative process... You should hire Shirley MacLaine here to run the projector. Now the film is showing itself the again! ...at which you put your creativity to work is in the selection of the film. Choosing it for your purposes on the basis of your evaluation of it for the effectiveness with your students. So what film did the people showing this film have to watch to teach them how to the show this film? The point is the key to all the steps following it. Your own preparation for showing the film. This is the point where you decide whether you will show the film all at one sitting or use only an excerpt which applies to the particular topic being studied. Eh, hey, let's just break this film up into a quibby. This is the point at which you make final plans for how to use this teaching tool. Which you're supposed to be teaching us. At the third point, class motivation. Motivate some class solidarity. Teach your kids to unionize. Maybe a simple procedure of telling your students the title of the film. Title of the film. Of what they are expected to learn from it. Or it may be as elaborate as using other teaching techniques over several periods leading up to the showing. Figure it out yourself. What, you want us to teach you how to use classroom films? Or the showing of the film. This is me and the bull, and I think that's the bull's cousin. He's a Cebu. Your guiding role, particularly if you decide to repeat the showing of the film or to shut off the projector at a certain spot for a predetermined reason. Or just on a whim. At point five, the creative teaching aspect comes into full... Play matchmaker with your kids and assign them prom dates. ...all the follow-up activities which round out your purpose in using the film. Discussion, testing for content, research work, report writing, problem solving... Any or all of these post-film activities, plus many, many more that you will think of... So stop asking us already. And it is your contribution which is the single most important factor in using a classroom film. And remember, always end your classroom films abruptly as hell. Good night, everyone. Well, I sure am glad I watched that. Now I finally know how to use these films that we've been watching together for over a year now. Now I finally know what I'm doing. 
Of course, I probably wouldn't have even known how to use this film were it not for the help of some very supportive patrons who joined me in the Patreon live streams where I was writing this riff. That's right, live on stream, I brainstormed jokes for these riffs and all of these people whose names you see, they were all contributing in the chat, helping me notice opportunities for jokes that I might have missed otherwise. In fact, as a result of everyone's generous and hilarious contributions in those live streams, we came up with so many jokes that we could not even fit them all in the video. So if you want to see a bunch of alternate and deleted jokes from this riff, there is a video of them on Patreon and the link is in the description. Check it out. Anyway, now that I finally know how to use classroom films, there will be another riff next month. It won't be on a classroom film, though. It will be on another Superman cartoon. But I'm sure the use will be very similar to the use of classroom films. All my education today will come in handy. Of course, before we return to Superman, there's another DC superhero who could use some attention. And we'll talk about him in the coming weeks. Of course, if you don't want to wait a few weeks, a video about that superhero is already on Patreon. Again, link in the description. There's just, read the descriptions. There's all sorts of useful information in the video descriptions, and I know no one ever reads them, but they're there for a reason, okay? Anyway, I'm gonna go out into the world and go practice just using classroom films. Just gonna get so much use out of them. So until next time, this is Dave, signing off.